Well, hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your mindset from where you are right now to becoming unstoppable. And you should feel privileged today because I'm sharing my one hour of outdoor exercise uh, with you. And I'm getting some fresh air this morning, it's Sunday, and uh, it's been raining a little on me. Uh, but I'm enjoying some fresh air because this will be the only time I get to come outside my house uh, today. I can go in my backyard, but uh, this is the only time I can get out in the, the public arena. And so today, it got me thinking about... Oh, I've been listening to uh, The Athlete's Story, which a good friend of mine, Kerry Pothast, Olympic gold medalist from Sydney 2000, she's put it together because right now... Uh, we would would be experience the Tokyo Olympics if they had gone ahead, and uh, today would be the closing ceremony. And uh, so we've got one more episode tonight, and it's been fascinating uh, listening to all the Olympic athletes and being able to ask them questions. And one thing is really, really clear to me, and that is about choosing your attitude, because. Two people can be faced with exactly the same circumstances and one person can choose to think life is over whereas others can say, wow, this is just the beginning, what an opportunity. And a lot of that time, it just comes down to the attitude that you choose. And so last night, uh, Matthew Mitchum, who's the diving gold medalist for Australia from the Beijing Olympics, They've been really open, the athletes, about their personal journeys and there's always a story behind the gold medal, or any medal for that matter. And uh, he's spoken very openly last night about his uh, his battle with alcohol, his battle with drugs, his battle with depression, uh, the, the fact that he was coming out to the world, that he was gay, and... Uh, You can imagine all of the things that he would have been dealing with, as well as the politics of uh, the sport and him training outside the national uh, national team, and that was frowned upon, and only people that were working under the national program were selected for the Olympics, and he wasn't. Uh, So he managed to be able to get the rules changed, and so then he was selected, and he ended up winning a gold medal. Um, So he had all of these different things uh, going on. And it would be very, very easy in those circumstances to be able to just pick an attitude of, do you know what, I'm done, this is too hard, I'm giving up. Uh, The other athlete that was interviewed last night was Debbie Watson, Olympic gold medalist from water polo from the 2000 Olympics. And uh, she was talking about the politics that uh, with, I think it was the coach, at the time and um, they didn't get along and uh, she decided to retire and then when she heard that uh, the water polo for women was going to be uh, an Olympic sport for the first time in the 2000 Olympics she wanted to get back involved again and even though she went from being the best in the world she had to prove herself all over again and she managed to do that and one of the best players in the world, won the gold medal, and the rest is history. But uh, it's it's so easy to be able to just give up and say, you know what, this is too hard. It's not meant to be, obviously. I mean, the story that you tell yourself, but it can be just so different if you choose that, that attitude differently. So the question I asked Matthew Meacham last night was, which do you think has been more powerful in you winning a gold medal? And I said, was it mindset? Was it work ethic? Was it your just God-given gift, talent, or your coaches? And he said, definitely mindset first, and then work ethic. So where's the good news in that? If you don't have the talent, but you've got the right mindset and the right work ethic, you can achieve anything, even a gold medal. And even though every athlete's story, so I've listened to 32 athletes now, no, hang on, 30, 30 athletes, 
even though every athlete's story is different, in many ways they're still the same in terms of their mindset, their focus, and their work ethic. And none of that has anything to do with the skill of being able to swim a certain distance or row as far or throw a um, you know, water polo ball uh, into a net at a certain speed. It doesn't revolve around any of those things. It's all stuff that you and I have within us. So that then got me thinking about what we're experiencing here in, well, um, more locally for me in Victoria, but certainly around the world with this global pandemic. I mean, every day you can choose to have an attitude of, oh my God, when is this going to end? Uh, money's running out, life is over. There's so many, so many sh- more shows on Netflix that I can watch. Um, I'm sick of not being able to do this. When are we going to be able to go for a holiday again? When can we do this? Why can't we do that? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Or what you can do each day is get up and say, "Wow, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm preparing now with the opportunity that I have, with this ex- extra time that I have." to make myself a better person, to make myself healthier, to make myself fitter, to make my mindset stronger, to read more books, to prepare myself so that when the other side of this opens up, most people are going to be behind because they've been asleep, but you are ready to take this on. So now, for the first time in your entire life, you've got an opportunity to do something fantastic for yourself and to launch yourself like a a cannonball out of a cannon when this thing is finally over. Now, isn't that a completely different scenario to the first one that I said? And all of that comes down to is just a mindset, a, a slight change in the communication that you have with yourself from one that's negative to one that's... Uh, I'm not going to give up. So, morning. So, it's it's just a slight shift. I remember I used to work with this team of people when I was in it was my last corporate career, and when I was uh, appointed to the position, I was initially going to have a very small team. I was reporting directly to the general manager. It was a great position. And I was going to have two people initially report to me and the team was going to grow from there. And I got the position and then on my first day, I sat down with the general manager and he said to me, now look, he said, these two staff that you've got, he said, they've been sitting working in another department uh, for the last 18 months. They've had no direction, no accountability, anything for the last 18 months and they've been moved over to sit under you now. And I'm like, fantastic. So we've got, we're about to dramatically increase our output and you've given me two staff that are unmotivated that have had no direction for the last 18 months, been able to come in whenever they want, leave whenever they want, basically do whatever they want through the day And now I've got to start giving them all this accountability in a department. And they said also, yeah, they don't really want to be here in this department. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So um, over the, the coming weeks and months, I didn't try to do anything radical to start with. But what I did say is I was very frank and said to them, look, this is my understanding, just what I said to you. So I said, look, we are going to make a difference here. Like our, our uh, team was called the Business Improvement Team. And I said, in order for us to be able to do that, I said, we need to get better as well. And so I understand that this is what you've been doing in the past, but I said, we need to, to make this change. Are you prepared to come along with me? And I said, yeah, 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 we are. Now, as the time went by, uh, you know, we had, some, we had some challenges and then, I remember we got to this stage where I said, do you know what, we've, we've just got to do a lot better than we are. 
And so we sat down for a team meeting and I said, look, we're going to work on this little project. But I said, here's the thing. I said, every single day when you come in that front door, I said, you've got a choice. I said, you can choose to have the attitude where, man, I've got a really big opportunity here to make a difference, uh, to do some good. And even though I may not like the position 100% of where I am, I just don't know that where this is going to take me. It could take me to that next job. And if I give 100% to this job, then you just never know where another opportunity may arise. I said, that's one attitude. I said, the other attitude is that you can, you can complain and moan and be unhappy about where you are and about the demands that, if you see them as demands, that I'm putting on you and that you can just hate work every single day. I said, the choice is yours. I said, just like when you go home. I said, you can choose to be happy about being at home or you can choose to be grumpy. And I said, this is exactly the same as what it is here. And I got them to think about those things that they really enjoyed doing and talking about why they really enjoyed those. And I said, but you choose. You choose to enjoy that. I said, this is the same thing. I said, yeah, you may not love it, but you can choose to look at the other aspects of why this is a stepping stone for you or, or something else. You've got to look at it from a different perspective than you are right now. And as time went by, we turned that team around completely. Well, I say we, it was me uh, that did it. And I remember sitting down with their performance uh, reviews after probably about, I don't know, maybe it was three to six months after we had those, uh, those discussions. And it wasn't just one, we had a number of them. And I said to both of them individually, I said, so tell me, your performance has really turned around dramatically. Your attitude has changed a lot. What do you think it was? And they both said, do you know what? It was when you got us to work on that project and you told us about choosing our attitude and both of us thought that it was really a dumb idea, but it was probably the best thing that has ever happened. And I remember when I left, uh, both of them said to me that, you know, I'm like the best manager that they've ever had and they were really sad to see me go. And um, the guy that worked for me, he, he had a bit of a, a bit of an attitude, a um, bit of an anger problem, you could tell. And you could tell that, that carried over into home. And when I was talking to him about it, he said, do you know what, it's also helped me at home. He said, I don't, I don't get as frustrated. Um, I don't get as angry now as I used to, uh, because I'm thinking about things differently. And I think out of all the things that I did with that team, I think the impact that I had on their, their individual lives and attitudes uh, was probably the most meaningful. I believe they're still there. This is some 12 years later. I believe they're still in the same organisation and uh, hopefully still, still growing. Uh, and, yeah, I guess over the last few days I've been, been thinking about there's so much bad media at the moment, there's so much bad press and uh, the, the impact that it's having on, on people's attitudes is, is really quite, quite compelling. So I thought, that's just a choice that people make. And so why don't we start making different choices? Put your attitude in a place of growth and opportunity and you watch how much things change and I ask myself one key question when I get pushed against something that I don't want to do or you know really challenges me and I say hmm where's the growth in this what can I learn from this where's the opportunity for me to grow learn do better from this rather than why is this happening to me why can't I do this? Why am I a failure? Uh, you know, those types of things. And if you think those things sound silly, I, I tell you, the, the number of Olympic athletes that I've heard them talk about uh, when they have those moments of doubt and uh, even though they're a, a world champion, they may have won a gold medal before, in that moment for a split second, they, 
I question their ability. Matthew Mitchum said, uh, for his gold medal dive, he said he had hoped that he might be able to get a, a bronze medal. He said a silver medal was like just way more than he'd ever thought. And he said he did the dive, his last dive, and before you know it, he's in the water, and he said he didn't want to come to the top. He said he stayed underwater for way longer than he normally would because he didn't want to know. He was scared to know, was it a good dive? Was it a bad dive? So he said, he, because it all happened so fast, you don't necessarily know. And so when he came up and he said the, the Aussie crowd was going crazy, um, he knew that it was a good dive then and he ended up winning the, the gold medal because the Chinese guy came out next and he, he sort of duffed his, his, uh, his dive a little bit. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in terms of achievement, you can have these moments of doubt. But where you can save yourself is by asking yourself those questions. Where's the growth in this? You can choose your attitude. So make sure you make the best choices. Have a great day wherever you are in the world. If you want to work more closely with me, go to the mentaltoughnessandbodyshow.com. Scroll to the bottom. You can click on the link there and opt in for a free consultation with me. I'd love to connect with you soon. See you tomorrow.